So with the continued interest on the use of uh, methylene blue in cancer, um, it was definitely um, kind of out there to some degree, but you know, when uh, Mel Gibson was on the Joe Rogan show talking about his networks using it, it definitely thrusted it to a whole other level. And what it's done is it's also reminded me of an old paper um, that I downloaded 10 years ago. So um, regarding its use, so methylene blue for me is not new. Like I've, I've used it, you know, more, this is, this is more of the injectable version that I'm familiar with um, for photodynamic treatment. And, um, and so that's why I've more been accustomed to its use, uh, more targeted and uh, that, that application generally. Um, and so, but this article was actually from 1909. So 1909, 119 years ago. And where? Published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA. And, and the, 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 the article, I'm just going to read on my screen here, was actually from a Dr. Abram Jacoby, MD, from New York City. And here in the, the first paragraph, I'm just going to read you what, he, what he's written. While the remedy of which I shall speak of is not new to me, it is new to the larger part of the profession. So again, 119 years ago, methylene blue was introduced into practice in malignant tumors by Morhof Moesteg of Vienna. I believe the first man who introduced it into America was Willie Mayer of New York. At that time, I used it a good deal by the injection method. Imagine their injection methods back then, big needles, thick, you know, how is it sterilized? At that time, I used it a good deal by the uh, injection method I mentioned. The injections are very painful and inadmissible because it is impossible to prevail on any patient to submit to them for any length of time. No wonder, no kidding. Therefore, for 14 or 15 years, I have been given methylene blue, or it is now called methylthionine hydrochloride in my own way internally. So, and when you, when you read this, this paper, so remember, this is prior to double-blind placebo-controlled trials, you know, methodologies, there's questions, you know, what other factors are involved. Remember 1909, like hygiene, you know, uh, what people are eating, drinking, smoking, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different world back then. But, but there's some kind of genuineness that, and this, that this author, um, that you get a sense from in, in, in this article, that he's just trying to be objective as best as he knew. And they were using methylene blue orally, but in, in, a, in a pill version. So they called it grains. So it's, um, I'm, and I'm not too sure what milligrams that translates to. Um, and uh, I haven't really looked to find that detail, but basically working up this pill version grains uh, and taking them daily and um, so it is best to give an after meals one at bedtime with perhaps one tenth of a grain of strychna, uh, strychnia and uh, arsenic acid a day so that there, he was adding other things to it with or without a vegetable purgative if that necessary so it was you know definitely kind of basic times and um, and what's interesting is that you know, he doesn't say that he's seen it cure patients. So that's what I mean about being objective. And, you know, if, if tumors were small, he'd say, you know, go get surgery, go get it cut out. Um, and, uh, but he, he felt that it helped to extend people's life, perhaps the quality in their lives. So that's why you kind of get a bit of honesty with what, you know, what this uh, doctor is, is, is seeing. Um, and then, and then he did mention that because it, he felt it important to like support the bladder because it, you know, he's, they suspected it irritated the bladder. So imagine you're taking this medicine, methylene blue, and it stains everything. And so it's staining your bladder all the time. And so I'm sure that's an irritant. Like, you know, that's been documented with injection. It could, it could, you know, definitely, uh, cause some tissue damage. So imagine your poor bladder. Uh, if you're dosing in high doses, what perhaps what this means and whatever else he's taken, they're taken with it. But what I find also interesting is 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 his conclusion. So, so the, let me read the conclusion. So, because I consider the matter of too great importance to be published prematurely, I have not spoken of it extensively before. 
I wanted to be perfectly sure about my results. I wanted to have, su have sufficient number of cases to, to base my assertions on. That's fair. I believe I have now waited long enough. I think that after 14 or 15 years, one is entitled to speak of a subject that appears to be of great value. It, is, it has done a great deal of good in my practice. You know, so he feels it was helpful. I have certainly restored a good many people to their work. I have kept a number of people alive two, three, six, and eight years longer than would have been their share. So there you go from, you know, a Dr. Abram Jacoby, MD in New York City, published in JAMA 1909. Um, something of interest. So definitely not new of application in cancer. And I guess there was a popular wave back then, 119 years ago. What happened in the middle? I don't know. But now we're seeing it being discussed again in various degrees. So more to come, I'm sure.